If I mute, I've, I've, I've mute. What is the sound is not clear. Hi, Amos. Uh, you're making a, a foundation for your daughter so that sure. she can write, yeah? Although I'm not sure I have that foundation. <laughs> Do you miss it? Do, would you have wished to have it? Uh, of course, yeah. Why, why, is, why is that the case? Uh, well, I believe what you write is what remains when you no more. So we have a duty to write because that that that, that is what remains when we when we're dead. Okay. Yeah, that, that's my philosophy. Okay, you've actually said we have a duty to write. You know, a duty, eh? legally speaking, uh, comes with a lot of responsibility. You are uh, in a way you are taking away the bit of writing for fun. Or writing just for Absolutely, the sake of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why why do you think so? Why do you think everyone has a duty to write? Well, we have grown up, first of all, uh, reading other people's work. Mm -hmm. And you kind of think, you know, if those guys had not written the Chinua Chebes, the Willow Sinuikas, those guys hadn't written. Yeah. What what would we what would we have, have read? So, you know, we, we have a duty to put something together for the next generation. Ah, okay, well, well put, well put, <laughs> well put. Thank you very much for having such a view. Eh? Actually, one Thank of the you. sessions that, uh, that Prof, that I attended where, the, where Prof was talking, Prof said that uh, if we don't try it, we are robbing the next generation of our stories. Yeah. And hence, Absolutely, we never yeah. get to know us. Eh? Absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. Well done. Well done, Daphne. I'm happy you are here. Yeah. I hope we learn Thank you. Uh, from each other and um, get to write more. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys for organizing. I think it's a fantastic okay. idea. Uh, you're welcome and we are happy to have you. Uh, we are happy to, uh, you know, to organize this, to encourage people to write more. Yeah, yeah, right. the whole basis of this. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else would wish to say hi before we start? Uh, just if you may have missed what I said earlier, you mentioned that uh, Prof will be joining us at 2.30. That's when he'll start formally. He could join a few minutes earlier, but uh, the session with the Prof will start immediately at 2.30. But uh, we have this time to get to know each other briefly, get to share some basic ideas, why we should write and why we are not writing as much as we should. I'm very happy to see people from Nigeria, uh, people from Ghana, people from different areas, all coming here with a uh, with a wish to write. Yeah. So it would be anyone who would wish to share probably their experience or um, where they are uh, just before we start. I'm Hello. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, Maureen. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm joining from Nairobi, mm -hmm. and I I do write, uh, though not as consistently as I would like to. Yeah. And yeah, I think my excuse, because it's just an excuse, would be the lack of a community, because, you know, just like Munira had talked about um, having a community and having just people... Um, you know, encouraging you and directing you and, you know, just helping you along your writing journey is very important, which is something I feel I have lacked for long because I feel I have many books inside of me, but I have no, I don't have the right, um, yeah, I don't have the right plan to put my thoughts into action. So, yeah, I'm hoping to learn a lot today and thanks for putting this together. Um, you're welcome, Maureen. What you've mentioned is very uh, is touching, eh? <laughs> lack of a community. Eh? Yeah. Munira mentioned that if you're part of a community, then you are able to, you are accountable and you are able to grow. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. So why why do you lack a community, Maureen? Is it that you have uh, have you joined a community in the past and dropped out, or have you tried and failed at one? Why are you not part of a community? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I joined one, and unfortunately, it, it was just uh, um, it was focused on politics. So that's really not something that I am into. I even did an article for them that they liked and they published on their website. But after that, I was like, uh, is this, do I really want to keep talking about politics? I wasn't sure about that. And I don't really like that. I'm more spiritual and I, and black conscious. So that's, those are the kind of topics that I want to write about. And of course, about trauma and overcoming trauma and, you know, just uh, self-actualization. Those are the things I want to talk about. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. And that is not what you found uh, in the community that you joined there. Eh? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well done. You could, um, I know uh, we have a number of uh, writers and a number of uh, and uh, uh, in Africa generally, but I um, think you need to be keen on uh, you know, what a community is focused on because that influences mm-hmm. what you get. So yes. possibly you could, you could try and see what, or what, I, what Writers Guild does to writers or what okay. we do to guild. So I shared a link, um, just one, you all the details about Writers Guild. And uh, okay. so you could try that if that is a, a route you'd wish to take. Yeah, I think it would be because even seeing like you've published uh, two of Monira's books, that's very important because sometimes maybe you have a lot of things you've written down, but you don't really think that uh, they matter. But maybe from someone else's eyes, they would be like, oh, this is something we can do this with it. So without that knowledge, you really can't do much. Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. That, is, that, is, that is actually the basis why Writers Guild was formed or why Writers Guild... Um, uh, why a group of writers from Kenyatta University came together in 2014 to form Writers Guild. Okay. There was dire need for a community and for guidance. Eh? Mm-hmm. So our focus is always on first-time authors, those mm-hmm. authors with basic questions, eh? mm-hmm. as basic as why should I write? Or mm-hmm. if I write, um, mm-hmm. where, where should I publish or where can I publish? So those yeah. basic questions are what we intend to answer and um, I'm happy to see a number of our writers here, Douglas Logedi. I'm happy to see Munira Hussein. I'm happy to see Emily Gatwiri. I've seen a number of our writers join us here, Elias Muhatia, Anne Burugu. So these are some of the people who are in that journey yeah, of um, you know, giving, something to, giving something to the other writer in terms of mm-hmm. accountability or encouragement and also growing as a writer. Okay. So that is our wish, that is our desire to grow writers so that we can tell our story. Thank you. I look forward to learning a lot. All right. Have you, have you seen the link I've shared? Yes, I have. I've even uh, got, got, gone inside, so I'll check it out. All right. Well done. Check it Thank out you. and uh, let's see what you can do together. Thank you. All right. I'm very happy to see one of our partners from Nigeria, uh, Anthony Onugba, uh, who is the founder of Africa Writers Development Trust. Uh, and also Africa's uh, Writer Space Africa. Yeah, Anthony, we really wish to hear from you. <laughs> Give us the chance to. We believe that we are well defined, relevant. Yes, Anthony, are you able to unmute? Hi, yes, uh, Dinda. Yes, I can unmute. Yes. <laughs> I'm just in a bit of a noisy environment. Um, but it's okay. good to be here, and I'm looking forward to the conversation actually registered and um, waited, <laughs> making sure that the time zone is correct because uh, Kenya is two hours ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really excited. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm short for words anyway, but I'll, I'm here actively to the end. And thanks for well organizing this. This is really good. Really, really good. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> and how are the writers in Nigeria? Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Um, they're all fine. Okay, way. they're all fine. Eh? Yes. They're a man of few words. Eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. They're all fine. Yeah. Okay, you. well done. Well done. Well done. So here we are. I hope we learn together.
Yes, we shall. So, All right. Thank you very much and welcome. Uh, feel free to let us know where you're joining us from. I'm happy to hear from Anne Burugu joining from Nairobi. Uh, Blessing joining from Tanzania. Uh, Anthony, of course, from Nigeria. You can uh, see. Yes, Emily, do you have something to share? No, sorry, sir. All right, all right. Yeah, so let us know where you're joining us from. I'm happy to see uh, Ian Sitati Wasilwa from Nairobi, contributing editor at African Executive Magazine, focused on public policy, governance, and geopolitics. I'm happy we are all here to chat uh, way forward eh, of writing our stories as Africans. Eh? Anyone Hello. else who is here with us? Hello, Gabriel. Yes, Collins. Yes, this is Collins. I'm joining from Migori. Yes, Collins. Yes, uh, first of all, I really appreciate the, the meeting. Yes. I also appreciate Writers, I mean, Writers Guild Kenya. Thank you. Because, uh, okay, I have a manuscript ready. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm at the, I'm, I'm, I'm at the, the process of uh, looking for a publisher and all that. Yes. Yeah. But then what I lacked when I was writing the manuscript yeah. was a space, a yeah. space where uh, I could meet like-minded people. Yes. A space where I could get mentorship. Yes. A space where I could get guidance. Yeah. Generally, a space where there's comradeship, as in where people have the same goals and the same... Uh, and they help each other to towards yes. achieving goals. So the writer space has really come for me, it has really come at a very, very crucial moment. Yeah. When I'm polishing my manuscript. Yeah. And uh, the guidance they are offering me in maybe looking for the best suited publisher. Yeah. That would publish my work. So I'm looking forward for more collaborations. I'm looking forward to being part of, I mean, Writers Guild. Yeah. And really taking Kenyan literature to the next level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Collins. Eh? <laughs> Welcome. We are very happy to guide you. We are very happy to work with you. And you, most importantly, you will meet other writers who have traveled the same journey uh, yes. or different uh, with different stories uh, for us to learn from each other. So okay, all the way you. from Migori, eh, in the border of Kenya and Tanzania, welcome. And uh, thank you. I hope that we learn together. Thank you. Right, thank you, Collins. Anyone else would wish to say hi? We just have 10 minutes and uh, our guest will join us and we'll start the session immediately. Hello, Gabriel. Yes, Cosmas, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, Gabriel. I'm speaking from Ghana and uh, this is the second time I'm joining uh, a seminar from uh, Kenya's Writers Guild. It's a beautiful thing. I'm also done with uh, my first novel and right on the same stage with uh, the speaker who just finished speaking. And yeah. uh, of course, to collaborate with people, to share mine and to tell the African story the African way and uh, get the continent moving uh, literary. So it's, I'm very happy to join join with all, all, all manner of people on, on this board, uh, trying to put things together to make Africa Africa by means of writing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, happy Cosmos that this is the second time you're joining and we are learning together. Uh, Africa is truly a home, it's one home. So whether in Ghana, whether in Tanzania, whether in Kenya, we are one. Yeah. And I'm happy that um, we can explore these possibilities. So uh, Writers Guild, we try our best to give you guidance and tell you what we think is um, necessary for you to publish your work and for you to get an outlet channel. So you may reach out to us. Um, we'll be happy to explore with you. So if you have a manuscript ready, or if you'd wish to, um, if you'd wish, if you think you should write, but you don't know where to start, we have our whole program, six weeks, to give you basic details on where to start. So let's engage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For now, I would be, I'm very happy still to hear someone uh, to say hi from another country or from another region before we start. Anyone Hello. know which speak? Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, 
I am happy to be at this important forum. I am a doctoral degree student at Kenyatta University here in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. I am a Nigerian. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my teachers, yeah. Malimo, Dr. Justice Makoha, yeah. um, told me about this an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, since the name of Professor Molumba yeah. is associated with it, yes. I made up my mind. I have to be in particular in this uh, program. Um, as a teacher of over 30 years, yeah. I have written books, but mostly yeah. textbooks for use by my students. Yeah. Uh, I'm working very, very hard yeah. on my manuscript for a collection of uh, poems. And I'm hoping that by the special grace of God, I'm going to publish it here in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I also hope to do some creative work. And I intend after this uh, meeting to get in touch with the organizers so that they can put me through here and there so that I become an established uh, writer and publisher. I thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, most importantly, thank you for saying yes to the call uh, within such a short time. You just had a, a window of one hour to make the decision and you made the decision to be here. So we are grateful to have you. We are happy that you are intending to write. You, have, uh, you are intending to take your writing journey a bit more seriously and publish. We are very happy to have you. So welcome. Uh, to Kenya and to Writers Guild, more specifically, so that we can travel together. Okay. Hi. Hi, Kendi Karimi. Yes, hi, I'm Kendi hi. Karimi. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I, the main reason why I'm here is because I want to meet with different people. I've been, I'm a writer and yeah. I'm a poet. So I've written six poem books so far. Um, all of them are on Amazon. But my main problem when it came to writing has been finding market, especially finding market for, for poetry in Kenya. That has been the main challenge. So I'm really hoping I can get to like meet a diverse group of individuals and learn a lot from just being here, having these conversations. Um, it really will help uh, go a long way when it comes to even the things that I write about. So I'm really happy to be here. And yeah, I'm also hoping that there's a, there's a book I'm working on, a fiction book. Yeah. So I'm hoping that eventually I'll get someone to, to look at it. But I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you very much, um, Kendi. Thank you very much uh, for your desire to write. Uh, poetry is one of those. Um, I remember attending a session where the speaker mentioned poetry as uh, something that is losing its glory. People no longer enjoy poetry, uh, possibly because of the way we package it. But this is an area also to you know to 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 bring the the joy of poetry back. Yeah, I think uh, our guest today, Professor, will mention to us uh, the joy of poetry mm, ah, during this time and now. So welcome, uh, Kendi. And uh, after you. the session with Prof, uh, we will re we, Writers Guild team will be, remain behind here mm. to respond to all your issues, all your questions to the best of our ability uh, with the goal of writing our stories. That is it. So I see uh, our guest uh, professor has joined us and I'm very happy that he has come way on time and in the same spirit I would not wish that we spend any more time uh, without giving him a chance. So at this point, um, most of you already know uh, uh, professor is a household name. Yeah. So most of you already know professor and um, we are very happy to present him to you today. Uh, you probably know the side of him who is passionate about Africa and who is passionate about the potential that Africa brings. You probably also know him from the side of 
uh, the legal expert uh, and, uh, and, and the prominent lawyer, but there is a side of him that you probably should have started from, the side of professor or that of a writer. So professors written in different, uh, on different issues in different languages. He has even written on, uh, on his native language, Doluo. He has written in English. He has written in Kiswahili. So this is someone who we look up to when it comes to writing. And uh, yeah, this, is, this is the time to have a legend with us. Yeah? So you're welcome, Prof. Um, uh, we are happy to have you. Please take over from here. We present 74 young minds from across Africa who have a desire to write, but possibly don't know where to start. And so this is why they would wish to hear yes. from why it is important yeah. to tell our story. I think uh, my network is unstable, and the sooner we start and finish, the safer we are. Yes, Prof, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I note that uh, you have not allowed me, or now you have allowed me to unmute. Uh, let me first start by congratulating you for putting together this gathering. I've had the advantage of listening to some of your presentations, and I do not want to spoil it by speaking for too long. But I want to... Sorry, sorry, Prof. I don't know if it's only on my end, uh, but we seem to be having uh, internet uh, challenges. Uh, it could be my end or your end. Uh, can you hear, Prof? No, 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 no. All right. Can, so, sorry about that. Okay. No, he's, so, he's sorting it. Uh, he's sorting it. Meanwhile, we are encouraged throughout this session to mute only unmute if uh, requested to, or um, when there is, um, uh, you know, when you, when you are requested to speak. Uh, Johnston, I take note. Thank you very much for that. Um, anyone with any question at this point, feel free to post in the as prof is back. Sorry about the network challenge. Um,
notes. Um, as we try to sort out the connection issue, you feel free to share your questions on the chat. Um, yes, we are trying to sort it. Yeah. Um, I've received information from Amos Onyango. Uh, we are trying to sort it. Thank you very much, Emily. Feel free to share your questions on the chat. I'll put all of them together and um, uh, I'll share with the prof. How frequent does Writers Guild offer its courses? Um, thank you, Annie, for that. Well, we have specific programs offered at different times. We have Write Your Passion program, which we recommend for those who wish to start their writing journey, because this is where we share the basics of your writing journey. Yeah. So uh, how do you write consistently? How do you start writing? Yes. Yeah, you can hear me now. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, because of the quality of connectivity, I'll speak very quickly. And, and as I said, I was making reference to Sophocles' uh, Oedipus Rex. And, and one of the statements that I remember there is when Oedipus has been expelled from his land in Thebes. And the people then said, behold, the sons and daughters of Thebes. This was Oedipus, the greatest of all men. He held the key to the greatest mysteries. Behold, what a tide of misfortune swept over his head. Then learned that mortal man must always look to his ending and none can be called happy until the day that he dies and carries his happiness to the grave. And I've always found that statement to be very profound because it does two things. To remind us that as long as we are mortal, there are things that we can achieve. And even when we achieve them, we ought not to behave as if we are God's gift to the world. This is a writer's guild. And one of your greatest claim to fame is that you believe that in order for things to have life beyond you, they must be immortalized in the written word. And I went to Greek of old, if only to remind us that today when we read about uh, great Greek philosophers, we read about Socrates. Socrates never wrote anything. It is his student Plato that wrote. When we talk about Plato, Plato is great because his student is Socrates wrote. And is Socrates is great because his student Aristotle wrote. And writing, therefore, is very fundamental. Today, we are able to go back into history in this part of the world and be able to trace the history of Africa because a great Senegalese, under Cheikh Diop, wrote. We, as Africans, after our libraries were destroyed in Egypt and in Carthage and in Timbuktu and in Monomotapa in Central African Republic, became very oral. So we don't give value to writing. But the moral of the story, as you know it today, if it, does, if it is not written, it does not exist. And I'm very happy with you that as young Africans, you are beginning to recognize that whatever little you do, you must commit it in writing. For those of you who are not in the business of keeping diaries or journals, I'm using this occasion to remind you that you ought to ensure that whatever it is that you do on a daily basis, you keep a journal. Because in a few years time, it is those journals that will become a point of reference for generations that live now and generations yet to be born. Writing is at the very bottom of, of, bottom of it. I do not know how many of you young men present here have ever watched the film Ten Commandments, and there are many Ten Commandments film, but I'm referring to the 1956 film, which was produced by Cecil B. DeMille with Charles, Charleston Heston as Moses. And many are the times during that movie when they say, so let it be written, so let it be done. So let it be written, so let it be done. And that I think is very critical. If you go to any of the works, you go to the history of the prophet Muhammad of the Islamic faith, when he meets God in the mountain 
the first thing that he is told is Ikra, and Ikra means write it down. He himself was semi-literate, but what he is told, Ikra, write it down. So writing is at the very heart of the immortalization of human thought. And I'm urging you on this occasion to ensure that you spread this gospel. In the last few years, courtesy of uh, FM radio stations, many people have become, very, have become very oral. If you ask them to write a sentence, suddenly they feel very lethargic. We must develop a culture of writing. And I hope that the Writers Guild is going to collaborate with institutions in this country to ensure that you have writing clubs in primary schools, writing clubs in high schools, writing clubs in universities. It is only in this way that our civilization will become a civilization that is worthy. And as I conclude, have you ever wondered why it is that amongst the enslaved and colonized peoples, it is Africans who suffered the most from slavery because at a certain time, our writing was disrupted. The Chinese were colonized, but the Chinese retained their culture. The Japanese were colonized, but because they were writing, they retained their culture. The Indians were colonized, but because they wrote, they retained their culture. The Arabs were colonized, but because they wrote, they retained their culture. We who did not write or whose writing were disrupted, we are the very same who continue to be subdued today. Today, if you go to many middle-class families, many of them are now telling their children, you must learn Chinese, you must learn Mandarin. You go to any part of the world, you find an Indian restaurant, you find a Korean restaurant, you find a Japanese restaurant, you find a Chinese restaurant, an Italian restaurant, a German restaurant. How many of you have ever seen a Luo restaurant or a Kikuyu restaurant or a Taveta restaurant or an Igbo restaurant? You only find Ethiopian restaurants because the Ethiopians wrote and they wrote in Amharic and they have their own alphabet. So, ladies and gentlemen, that which is written is immortal. Let us immortalize our thoughts in the written word. God bless you and have a good session. Immortalize your thoughts so that they may live from generation to generation. Be blessed. Thank, thank you very much, Prof. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prof, for taking the shortest time and for reminding us very profound ideas that we always have to think about. Um, you've re referred to Africa being an oral society for, for, for most of the part uh, that we have experienced, but now you have encouraged us to consider immortalizing our ideas. Prof, if you'd allow me, if I could just request, maybe you could just take two or three questions, then we'll just let take you- Just take two because the- the problem here is that I have a very unstable uh, connectivity. So pose two questions and respond to them. All right. So who do wish to go first? You are able to unmute and speak. Anyone? Before I read what is written. The oral ones have gone mute. <laughs> well, I written. see. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes, we'll go with the written. Eh? So, yes. Paddington uh, Handina Hammer asked, how do we circum, uh, circumnavigate the challenges associated with dwindling reading culture within our societies as writers? You know, one of the most unfortunate things is that in Africa, including Kenya, education is not made pleasant. And therefore, reading and education is almost a punishment. This idea of pegging people's lives on reading for examination makes people hate reading. 
If you go to the most successful countries where examinations are not a life and death issue, and I will refer you, if you look at what is happening in the Scandinavian countries, such as Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and, and even Finland, people love to, to write. Have you ever traveled, those of you who have traveled, if you travel, you'll see young people from Europe and even China, when they are at an airport lounge, they are reading. But young Africans are visiting shops, shopping. And, and, and that, <laughs> this is, by, and I'm being very unfair to us, but I can afford that luxury, is because our education system does not inculcate a culture of reading. It inculcates a culture of passing examination. We pass examinations, you get a good job. And once you get a good job, you get good life. Reading for its own sake is something that is not appreciated. Knowledge must be pegged to getting a job. And I am urging us that beyond this, we must do something with our education system. I do not know whether the manner in which we have in Kenya introduced the, what we call the competence-based education system, whether it's a good thing. We have started examining people at standard four. I would never examine people at standard four nationally. I would not. I would not even examine people at standard A. My first examination would be an examination after year 12, so that I encourage people, for example, to read Chinua Achebe's book, Things Fall Apart, or Morning Yet on Creation Day, or Ngugiwa Thiongos, or Grace of God, The Promised Land, and you ask them to come and summarize it for us in writing. And I'm answering the question that I've seen on the screen. You go and read a book that is 200 pages, summarize it for me in, in one page, on one page. And that, in that way, we will begin to inculcate a culture of writing. And I hope that you, the Writers Guild, are going to collaborate with other institutions to organize a writing competition in Kenya. And it's not, it not just a one-off thing. It becomes a culture, I've already said, that you create clubs, you can create clubs in, uh, in different schools. And in addition to that, you have this competition so that there is a new generation of young Africans who know that when you write, you are going to do that in a manner that will influence the next generation. West Africans do a very good job. I see very young African, West African writers, Yag Yansi, who has written Homecoming. I see somebody, Chimama and Angozi Adichie, younger writers. But in East Africa, it used to be said in the 60s that East Africa was a literary desert. And yes. it's true that it remains a literary desert. In, in the creative sector, you still find that uh, Ngugi is our true north. Ngugi wa Thiongo is our true north. But in West Africa, you can begin to see quite a number of writers. Of course, in Kiswahili, we are doing very well. Pauline Kerr with Kigogo, or oh, my good friend uh, Ken Walibora, uh, was doing a very good job. I think Kiswahili writers are a lot more active than the English writers, which is a very good thing. So I think that once we have a culture that makes writing and reading pleasant, then it would be very good. I remember when I was a little younger, my good friend Barack Okwaro Maina Muluka and somebody used to have a program on, in, uh, in uh, KBC called Books and Bookmen. And they would simply analyze a book. They would take Grace of God's book. They would yeah. take uh, uh, the David Mailu's book. And, and that is perhaps what your, your organization should do, that you become famous at the Writers Guild for talks, lunchtime talks, monthly talks. And, and in that way, you'll have made your contribution. And if you expect a big bang explosion, don't expect that. Is block by block. And the fact that you are doing this in itself is to be appreciated. I keep on saying the ocean is not great because it is the ocean, but it's because of the droplets that make it. The forest is not great because it is the forest, but it's because of the trees that make it. So you too, you are a tree, be a good one. You are a droplet, be a good one. And Edwin Otieno is raising, raising his hand and uh, Chantal is saying, Politics is killing us. Politics, politics is not killing us. It's just bad political manners. We are very mannerless politicians in this country. And that is what is killing us. We must introduce hygiene and good manners in our politics. And once we do so, 
then Kenya will change for the better. We are great people with a great population capable of doing great things. And you'll be amazed, for example, in the arena of Kiswahili, Kenyan Kiswahili authors write better than Tanzanian Kiswahili authors. <laughs> Amazing. <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that, the, Gabriel, that you know that is actually the truth. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there are also young writers in, 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 in English, like Binyavanga and yeah. others whom you do know, you, you know. There are quite a number of, I too have written a book in fiction called The Stolen Moments. So I'm not just talking, I'm also writing <laughs> beyond that. And if you look at my writing, so I'm, 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 I'm saying what I actually do. Sometimes it's painful, you write something and it doesn't get publicized that much, but never give up. Yeah. If you look at the history of some of the great writers, their books were rejected by many big people and then ultimately the stars align and you begin to do the right thing. So let me allow you to proceed. I know there are many questions. Lasana, I can see your hand raised, but rest assured that we'll have occasion. Gabriel is going to organize lunch, which you'll pay for, and I'll yes. answer all your questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prof. Just, just one more before much. we let you go, Prof. Please. Just one more. Uh, many writers today uh, look at writing as purely a commercial, um, they look at it purely from a commercial aspect. Look at your work, for instance. You've written in uh, Dolwo, you've written in your native language, which many people will say, there, is, there are no many people to buy. So why do I yeah. write in that language? How can we get to that point where we look at writing beyond the money we can make from it or beyond the looking at writing utilitarian from a utilitarian yes. point of view? Why can't, why, why, how can we get to that point where we look for writing for its own sake, keeping our- and, and, and yeah. Gabriel, you've used a very good word, utilitarian, and I think you've used it appropriately, that we became wedded to money and money becomes the alpha and omega. But if you look at the countries where people write, you'll find that uh, there are institutions that support writing. For example, if you wanted to write a book and you wanted to write, say, just publish a thousand copies, I would myself yeah. like a government that, for example, says that you safari copy. If you support a hundred authors, we'll give you a tax exemption of 10%. So it is the duty of the government. When I hear this youth fund thing, which some of which make no sense, giving people 50,000, which they go and eat, it is not very useful. My own view is that we can incentivize people in private sector through tax rebates and help them support. And I hope that after this conversation, Tomorrow, next week, you are going to write to Safaricom, you are going to write to Equity and the Cooperative Bank and say, I have a writer's guild. I want you to support us in raising a fund or say even of 10 million to support 10 writers so that it does not matter whether their books make money in the early days. Money is good and is useful and is necessary, but you simply write because you want to share knowledge. My book on which is the you look at Gigitimbege is coming out. Um, um, is, and, and I know not many people will buy it. And even if they buy it, one person will buy it and a hundred will read it. I don't expect to make any money from it. But I hope yeah. and believe, or I pray and believe that it will be knowledge. It will be a reservoir of knowledge. And that is what we must achieve going forward. The government must be involved deliberately deliberately in supporting initiatives such as this. When the government is involved and is clear, then they incentivize the private sector through uh, tax rebates or tax exemptions. And it is you who must begin to educate government in that regard. So I expect you, for example, to write to the Minister for Culture, to write to the Minister for the time being in charge of education and, and introduce these ideas. Sometimes we blame, we blame these individuals, but they do not know. So make them know so that they have no excuse. So thank you very much, Gabriel. Thank, thank, thank you. you very much, Pro. God bless you, and it will be well thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. OK. <laughs> um. It is always said, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for staying through. Uh, that was brief, what I would call short and sweet. Yeah.
uh, you know, very good things eh, should be served in measured quantities. And that is uh, what we have today, but quite a challenge that we have. Uh, we just had 25 minutes with the, with Prof. Uh, and it is always said that in Africa, a minute spent with a legend is more than a lifetime. So what can you remember? What can you, um, what are some of the things that you've picked from Prof? Just um, you know, a quick recap before we go to the next session. I ask you to stay, just stay, um, stay so that we can put whatever we've discussed with Prof into context. What can you remember? You can unmute and share yes. you know, something that you've picked. At the yes, bio. go ahead. Yeah. Um, what struck me from Prof's presentation is the need to take notes on a daily basis. No matter how brilliant you are, you tend to forget things, especially as you grow older. Yeah. And in the words of Professor Lumumba, you write these things down so that you can immortalize them. Yes. Most successful writers are the ones who keep diaries. They make references to what they have written on a daily basis, and then they become useful in you know, extended writings. That is one thing I have taken away from him. I will always take copious notes about whatever happens around me from time to time, so that later in life I can make references to them and then write, uh, do some you know, very good uh, work of writing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adebayo. And I see you get uh, Brenda, Brenda Rajwai is uh, saying that she would also wish to take the challenge of writing on a daily basis. The little experience that we have, yeah, uh, writing them on a daily basis. That is a challenge that Brenda is taking. I don't know who else is taking. Who would wish to share what you've picked from the brief session we've had with Prof? Before we go to the question and answer, I see a number of people uh, who are in the book industry and we'll be happy to share some of the details that trouble you. So remain behind for question and answer, but first let's reflect on the moments we've shared with the writer, with um, Prof. Anyone else would wish to speak? I can see a hand raised, but I can't, um, I can't locate whose they are. So just feel free, feel free to speak. Um, oh yes, uh, Lasana. Yes, Lasana, go ahead. You are able to speak. Yeah, thank you very much. And I learned call on number team. Um, student Lasana Morris from uh, Liberia, West Africa. Uh, almost, uh, almost two number of teams from Professor Pajul Lumumba uh, concerning the difficulties of writing in Africa, as where well. young Africans uh, need to be encouraged to work hard and to ensure that uh, they become good writers by reading a uh, number of things and writing things that are important, uh, not to go in your store and shop, to be shopping day and night. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lasana. I'm sorry I was not able to hear you clearly, but thank you so much for taking part in this. I believe uh, when I go back, I'll be able to hear what you say. Thank you so much. Um, who else would wish to speak? Um, I saw a hand up. Yes. Um, Hello. Edwin. Edwin, yes. Go ahead. All the way from Kisumu. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. I'm, I'm very much grateful, first of all, for you for having organized this. <laughs> I've learned a lot from this session and especially the, the promise that we as uh, young Africans have and the responsibility we have towards the, you know, the just just the writing as an art. I've always wanted to write, and, and I've always been passionate about writing. And for one reason, I've always been passionate about writing. And for one reason, sorry, sorry. but for one reason, I've always had this idea that uh, perhaps, are, are you getting me clearly? Yes, 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 yes. For one reason, I've had this this idea that uh, maybe time is. <laughs> The Kenyan climate, for example, is, is not ready to welcome writers insofar as using writing to make some uh, 
um, social change and impact in our society. A case, a, case, a case in time and an example, I've been trying to really try to identify with African-American history and really knowing what position and what role these writers like Maya Angelou, like Langston Hughes, like Henry Dovey, the theory, you know, these guys had a, a certain kind of impact and certain kind of wave that really got, you know, the political class of the day thinking and talking about racial issues and issues, such issues important. Yeah. So it just came to my mind that really, I really need to know what was it that was driving these people to really kind of do such things to such a magnitude that they really actually made huge, huge gains in, in, in racial discourse in as much as you have it today, but we have to give it to them for what it is that they, they did. And I really thought like, you know, it is such spaces that Writers Guild and any other person as involved, we can use such spaces to ensure that we take the discourse on another level. We have several issues that as a society we are having. And, and I think it's quite some good time for us to, you know, just continue doing whatever it is that we are doing. And uh, I hope for the day that being part of Writers Guild and whatever it is, in our own spaces, we are going to make it. Only that I, I like to encourage us that as, as writers, that is the kind of social impact that social impact change that we should uh, now be con uh, concentrating on, using writing as a tool for social change. And like the con co commercial perspective that you're talking about, it's now taking that precedent and its part. I think it's time we think as writers to really sit down and make things work for us and use our ability as writers yeah. for social impact and change. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edwin. You brought a very important aspect which Prof talked about, looking at writing uh, for its own sake, not the, what you can gain from writing, but writing yeah. and feeling satisfied at that. So yeah. today we see a lot of uh, emphasis Hello. put on the commercial aspect, which is not bad, but it should not be the precedent huh, for our writing. So yeah. we just reflect on the session a bit, but now I would wish to take it to the next level. Whoever is going to speak or whoever is writing a reflection must now commit, yeah? Must now commit whether, must now tell us whether they commit to write or not. Uh, because we have been accused of attending writing sessions, organizing, organizing writing sessions, but they remain at that. Now we should move from there. We should now commit to write. Not just talk about writing, but truly. So every other time you are speaking, the first word you, the first um, sentence you have to mention is whether you commit or not. Okay, so would wish to go. Hello, next. Gabriel. Yes, Johnston, go ahead, Wandera. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. First, I commit to write. <laughs> well done. <laughs> thank you so much for having organized this session. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much. The <laughs> most thing that I'm. Uh, interested me is a professor's lifestyle. Yeah. He's a single person that has achieved so much. So imagine in his own life, he yeah. writes, he manages to teach. I'm sure he teaches in more than one university or several institutions. Still, he attends seminars and workshops such like this one. Yeah. He travels. He's a, a, a qualified lawyer. He does litigation both in Kenya and Tanzania and all that, but sometimes you get to meet young people, like uh, yeah. our age mates, eh? someone yeah. who does right. maybe a like single thing on a daily basis, you get someone maybe as a, a school teacher or a student, and they only always have one excuse. They tell you that they are busy. So someone is busy oh. studying, someone is busy um, teaching, yeah. or something like that. And you know, maybe yeah. they don't have a personal lifestyle. Maybe they don't exercise. They don't want to travel. They don't meet and interact with other people. So if you ask them, why don't you want to do this thing? Some of them even don't have hobbies. Someone doesn't have a single hobby. And if you talk about them, if you ask about that, someone tells you, you know, I'm a teacher. I get to teach from Monday. I wake up at 4 AM and all that. So I think people just give yeah. them excuses. And uh, they don't want to be creative and achieve many things in their life and all that. That is the, the most thing that I've, uh, I've, I've gotten from this session. Okay. It's well a challenge. Done. I would like many young. It's a challenge. I would like many young people to take, to well have many done. goals and go for them. Wow. May I say something? Well done. Well done. Well done. Hello, Thank Gabriel. May I say something? Yes. Yes. Rose, go ahead. Hello, Gabriel. Hi, Rose. How are you? 
Hi, I'm very good, thank you. So um, this session is really, really amazing. I'm very, very fine. Um, the one thing that uh, I've gotten from this session is the, I did not know that um, East Africa is a literal desert. I actually thought we had writers, but yeah. um, as you said, the monetization of writing is what is bringing a problem to very, very many writers down here. And uh, one, I do commit to write. Yes, I've been writing for 10 years right now. And I must say, it's all about priorities, just to answer what Wandera was saying. Very many young people do not have hobbies. And it's not that they cannot do it, it's because they don't want to do it. Because I had a full-time job in the hotel industry. I was working like 12 hours and I would still find time to write. So it's all about prioritization. And the one thing that is so discouraging in the Kenya society is you submit as out there. So it's good to just have writing without the purpose of money and yeah. to have companies that can endorse that would be so nice because it would open up doors for many writers out here. Thanks. Thank you, may I Thank say you. something? Yes, yes, yes. Um, My name is uh, Kariuki Moigwa. I, I'm not young, but I am a writer. I commit to write. Well done. I commit to well write done. more and more. I, I write educational books, books on arbitration, mediation, environment. I've just uh, done a book on achieving sustainable development through peace and environmental security. What I've learned from these sessions is that we must be ready to tell our own story. We must be able to say something for posterity. And if we don't, someone else will write our story for us. One of the reasons why uh, Africa looks uh, like a desert is because we've lost the writing. I didn't know that Africans could write. I grew up imagining Africans could not write until I came across uh, those facts that uh, there was writing in Ethiopia, Egypt, Sudan, West Africa, and so on. In fact, the first university was in Africa. So what yes. my takeaway from this is that uh, it is possible to write. We should encourage each other to write. Yes. And we are in a very good age, a golden age of internet. Whatever you write, it will be published by yourself worldwide. It will reach the whole yes. earth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Karaoke. Thank you very much for that. And I would wish to combine what you've just mentioned with uh, what Ross Mueni mentioned. Ross, you had asked a question earlier regarding whether it is only a must for you to write, uh, let's say, your culture, because uh, yeah. that is not the, the context in which you have grown up in. And this is what we always advise in Writers Guild. Uh, it is not a must for you to just write about a specific thing that we are talking about at the moment, let's say African culture. But our emphasis is on writing itself, yeah. So when, as Prof said, when you write, you immortalize it. You keep it for generations to come. And uh, the world is dynamic. We learn from different cultures. Uh, when you look at, let's say, for instance, set books, we always have set books from uh, countries across Africa or even from another, um, other parts of the world. So the emphasis is on writing, not necessarily what you write on. That we leave to you, yeah? So write, let's just keep writing, yeah? And then the point you have made, regarding having a support system that encourages writing, encourages the culture of writing. Ross, we have talked about this for sure, yeah? And um, a lot needs to be done, yeah? But by who? That is the question that we are asking, by who? So if we come to this session, we say, you know, we need this, we need this, we need this, then we leave. Next week, we call you for another session. We need this, we need this, we need this. Who should do this? This is the call for Writers Guild. We are in inviting you and me. Everyone who is here, we are now 72, you and me, to make a contribution. We would not wish to leave it at the point that the government should do this or academic institutions should do this. No, you have a point to make. I'm very happy to see Florence Kimuyu here, a very good editor. 
Edith, uh, Florence can look at Mweni's work, Ross Mweni's work, uh, and Lewis Momanyi, uh, uh, with, through the networks he has, he can buy that book. So if you and me make a commitment to write and to support each other, then we will not need to be amorphous to, to talk about people we can't see. So that is the call of Writers Guild, that you and me have a role and we must play it. And that's why we should start from the point of committing, whether we are writing or not. If we are writing, if we are not writing, then we'll keep talking about writing for the longest time. <laughs> I hope that is not too harsh for you, Ross, that we have a role, you and me to play. And that's no, why the not. Writers Guild provides this opportunity for us to be members. If you'd wish to be our member, you'd wish to grow together with us. Uh, people like Professor uh, Prof. PLO are our mentors. We always have sessions with them. We engage with them to encourage us. So this is a call to you to make the move. Yeah, to make the move. Not only to fight for writing, but to write, yeah? So that is the point, yeah? And uh, that is the point that um, Karaoke has reiterated, eh? said that is he was not aware that uh, people were writing. He was not aware. But then you realize yesterday we were sharing with my friend Lewis Mumani who is here, um, was telling me that we used to have bedtime stories. Our grandparents used to tell us stories before we sleep. But nowadays you can't even get a story. So our children, uh, it's like they start growing from the branches. Yeah, They can't grow from the roots. No stories to tell. The stories we have are the stories that have been written from other context. And then what does that do to us? Introduce us to a culture that we are not used to. So the commitment is necessary and the action is even more necessary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maureen, Maureen, uh, Ngayu, this is your chance. Talk to us. Well, I'm sorry, I missed the part where Prof uh, referenced uh, writing to earn. I had to get my son from the bus stop. So I don't know what you guys talked about in terms of earning, because even as much as we don't want to write for money, um, writing committedly and consistently requires a lot of time and energy and of course we need to make a living out of it but even that that's not even my biggest issue my biggest issue is readership because I do have a blog and it's been there for a while but up to today I don't know what I'm doing wrong I haven't really gained enough readership or just you know just to get people referencing or giving you feedback on whatever you're talking about you know, it helps one to feel that actually there is a difference that I'm making. This person appreciates my content. If only for one person, you can keep like creating the same kind of content. So that's my issue. Yes, Maureen, I would, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the fact that you've not been able to get, um, let's say readers to, to, to look at what you do. Uh, first, regarding the issue of what Prof talked about regarding writing for money or earning from your writing. First, we did not say that it is bad to earn from your writing or we should not focus on that. But we said, Prof said as much that uh, it should not be the primary focus. The primary focus should be writing for its own sake. Writing, let's say you write something that even if it is 400 years from now, when you will not be in a position to enjoy the money, but people will be there at the time will enjoy the content. So writing as the primary goal. But then of course, uh, experience must have taught you, Maureen, that when you do a good thing, when you write well, then money is a, a natural consequence of that. I, especially when you combine it with other things, let's say you, you probably brand yourself well or be open-minded to other ideas which you can earn from regarding writing, experience teaches us that we definitely earn from it but it should not be the primary focus because it I will agree. always do that yeah i agree gabriel and it's not even my primary focus but uh, yeah as we had talked about having a community and building consistency in our commitment in writing i think maybe i had uh, not 
uh, put my question correctly, maybe which are the which are the sites where you can publish your work and get feedback on it so that you can grow and become better and maybe articulate your ideas better so that people can understand your content. Uh, there, are, there are a number of things, Maureen, and a number of um, a number of ways to approach it. You could look, let's say, for a forum, let's say, a online forum uh, where you can post your work, or you could look for, let's say, real people. Yeah. So just like the example I gave, Florence is here. She's a great editor. You are the writer. So we just need a connection to bring us together. Yeah. So there are a number of uh, platforms where you can grow as a writer. And growing as a writer does not necessarily only mean, let's say, uh, getting your work to be read out there. There are a number of ways you can grow as a writer by, let's say, attending programs where you get basic details regarding the writing journey. You can uh, grow as a writer by, let's say, attending forums like this, where you are able to interact with other people who have written, people who came before you, hearing their experiences and what they did. Probably from that, you can get some ideas. You can grow as a writer, let's say, by reading other writers. You can get grow as a writer by doing a number of things, attending book clubs, yeah, or what you what you just mentioned, um, sharing your work in a platform where you can get feedback. So. Uh, our approach as Writers Guild to grow writers is um, a multi, where we use different ways to grow you, yeah. So possibly you could, um, I'd shared earlier, I, I could share still the link to Writers Guild. You can have a look at what we offer. If you feel we are a good platform for you and Patricia is here, our focus is always on you. So we allocate your mentor uh, and a mentee because you also would wish to share what we learn um, you can take part in different programs that we have. Um, write your passion program, which gives you six, week, six weeks of exposure to writing details. So all this put together, we believe they will help you grow. Yeah. So possibly you can look at what Writers Guild offers and uh, uh, then you could consider. Or you can reach out through to our email and we can give you details of other writing communities in Kenya and what they do then you can uh, decide uh, which one you'd wish to be part of to grow you. So we've compiled all the details of writing communities in Kenya, and you can see what they do and make a decision for yourself. That's amazing, Gabriel. I'm going to take you up on that. I'm sure we'll talk more after this. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. You're welcome. And I believe I've answered possibly questions of someone else. OK, just to add, um, just yes. to add first of all, yeah. um, Maureen, I would assist you with your blog uh, just to gain more visibility. Um, so perhaps later on, um, we can communicate through Gabriel. On That's that. amazing. Thank you so much, Anthony. And then uh, there were several things that Prof said that I yeah. really, really found very intriguing and interesting as well, especially regarding the reading. I'm sorry, I missed that. So this is general now regarding what Prof said. I'm saying that there are several things that he said that I found very interesting, especially regarding the reading culture. And he traced everything down to formal education yeah. because it appears formal education is not, perhaps it's time for a transformation of some sort because it's been the same methods and it's not only Kenya. I mean, it's the same in Zambia, the same in Nigeria. Zimbabwe, everything is still the same. Almost nothing changes year in, year out. Meanwhile, we're supposed to be in a dynamic society. We're supposed to learn, evaluate what we have uh, done and improve, but we have not done so. So yes, I agree with Prof on that. And I think that for those of us that can write to, I mean, the, at a point I was talking with Dinda about why Africans would pay the same to tour, um, to visit story sites in Kenya with what those in the West would pay. I mean, we're Africans, why are we paying more? Um, but of course, um, there are many issues also that we can write about. So I would suggest Dinda that if possible, let's try and have an institutional approach to this, where we write as institutions requesting for um, some level of change as the case may be. Then the next is on the youth fund. You know, even in Nigeria, they have billions allocated to youth as youth fund. But yeah. interestingly, you never see anybody who says, I have benefited from the youth fund. 
So just like Prof suggested, if it is incentivized in the sense that you tell maybe Safaricom, for instance, just like the example he gave, you have um, tax rebates if you um, maybe take fund 50, 100 people. That way we know that the money is not going into anybody. And of course there's evidence of that, of those 100 people because the book, the product will be the evidence. So Safaricom cannot lie to say, oh, we have funded 100 people and they've published if there isn't any physical or, or if there's really no evidence. So that alone takes out the possibility of corruption of people um, stealing money and stuff. Okay. Then uh, the final point is on the writing competitions. And in that, I think that that's something we should look into jointly as well. Because yeah. all of those things we had when we were um, much younger, um, yeah. but right now it's gone, it's nowhere. Um, yeah. We have perhaps the, um, I, I am trying to be very subtle with this, but we have people who do not care about the industry as head of industries. Yes. So those in charge of arts and culture, literacy, education, blah, 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 are people who are not really passionate about it. So, and then you have the passionate ones who do not find a way or who cannot find a way to even get there. And then finally on writing and making money, I think that um, just like Prof made that comment. I mean, Prof is a very popular person. He said, one person buys his book or hundred people yeah. read it. So it's the same thing with us. Um, we might not make as much money as we, we would probably anticipate from writing, but the popularity is there, the history is there, and our contribution to society is there as well for people even 100 years to come to see. Yeah. And it's the same, and also it's an opportunity for us to also think outside the box. Writing alone might Maybe not you can make be it loud, a bit our source loud. of... Like writing alone might not be a source of livelihood. For instance, we have an editor here. Mm -hmm. Of course, not everybody can be an editor because it takes a lot, really. Editing is not all about looking for where the A is missing in A and D. It's a lot more than that. So there are other things that people, that writers can actually do, that creative generally can do. Apart, like uh, Maureen is hosting a blog. Um, when the blog is fully functional, even if it's by clicks, you have some little income there. Unfortunately, we are in a, a continent where little emphasis is paid to education. We, um, a friend of ours, uh, I think Dinda, you might know her now. She's the new um, chief editor of Writer Space Africa. Um, yeah. She was met by somebody from the US who requested for copies of some books that she just edited. And what yeah. she said was that um, the Congress, Library of Congress yeah. also goes around buying books. Listen, buying books from African yeah, writers yeah. and sending yeah, them yeah. back to the US. So they're having like a library of books written by Africans because they are yeah. studying us really. And that's why if you remember Dinda when we were in Zimbabwe, one of the yeah, things that yeah. came up about the whole grant giving thing was that it's, it's an avenue to study, to say, yeah. okay, what are Africans doing? What solutions are they providing? And how can we in the end um, yeah, make yeah, sure that yeah. this don't work, something yeah, like that. So okay, okay. if, if we're being studied, why can't yeah. we study others as well? Why can't we grow? Why can't we not visit the shopping? Why can't we not shop when we go to the airport? Why can't mm. we look for bookstores or bookstands and buy books yeah. from all, yeah. all cultures and then study and really study? Finally, let's also support ourselves. We must be able to buy African books because we love our continent. I mean, uh, didn't I remember last year at the book fair? No, last two years at yeah. the book fair, the number of yeah. books I went back with, even from writers I never knew from your stand. Yeah. And you know, a lot of them came there to sign, um, to sign on the book and it was yeah. really good. So yeah. when we travel, let's, be, let's also be able to buy books, buy, yeah. support ourselves because we don't know how far this can go in helping somebody grow. Sorry for talking too much. Thank, thank you very much, Anthony. And thank you for highlighting some of those areas. I've picked especially what you have mentioned regarding institutional approach for us to have a common face and to sort some of these issues. Yeah? And thank you very much for the work that you're doing at Africa Writers Development Trust, what we have been able to do together and what we do, what, what the promise uh, of the future. 
So at this point, I would wish to tell you among the very good things that Anthony does from Nigeria is organizing a writer's conference. And this year we are going to Tanzania. Yeah, so uh, Anthony, you can share in the chat, um, um, you know, the link where someone can uh, take a note to participate uh, so that we can go together and interact and share with writers from different areas um, yeah, and grow as write writers in Africa. And at this point, uh, we are, um, our wish was to finish this session at four. Yeah, uh, and that has not changed. So at this point, I see a number of hands raised. Yeah, but I would wish to just take a short moment. Eh? If you have a blog, maybe a book, a link of your book to Amazon, um, or just a name of your book where we can find it, I'm inviting you to write it in the chat so that someone else can see and uh, possibly consider do, uh, uh, getting a copy of that, uh, even learning from what Antonia said regarding supporting ourselves. Yeah. So at this point, before I take uh, another question, I would just wish to invite Patricia Molin Mataga. Patricia, are you there? Um, Patricia can just take a short while to just tell us a bit about a program called Write Your Passion Program, which, uh, which was designed to help authors um, answer some of the basic questions that they have. So this is a six weeks program that is offered um, online, it is virtual, um, it is blended, some uh, sessions are virtual, some, and one or two is physical, uh, where you get to meet uh, some of the writers like Mr. Yunga Pala, um, uh, Mr. Kinyanjui Kombani, to help us to understand some basic ideas regarding writing. So Patricia, if you could just take a short while to let us know about that as we share our, the details of our work, and our blogs here so that we can support each other. Hi, hi everybody. I'm so glad that all of us came here today so that we can learn together. Uh, when you share your knowledge, uh, and the other one share their knowledge, we all learn together and it's good to learn together so that we don't leave anybody behind. At the end of the day, what we want to do is to share our stories so that when it, years to come and people will be wondering what was there, why did people start wearing masks all of a sudden? Why were people, why did people trans, started working in the houses after office being the main thing? We'll write about this and the best way to do that is to start right now and don't say I don't have an idea we have so many ideas. Every day you'll encounter one thing that would challenge you to write. So as we go about saying I'm going to write, please don't just commit. Start writing and don't start don't say you'll start tomorrow. Can you just start by today by pointing putting down what you've learned today during this session, what our, um, our colleagues and our friends here have shared. Just write something about it, whether it's 100 words or 50 words, it's good to start than to say, I'll start tomorrow. So I'm going to talk about Write Your Passion course, which is a Writers Guild uh, course. Uh, write Your Passion course is a six week uh, program to learn more about writing. Uh, write your passion. It's that course that you have to come in with a goal. So you've been writing. It's for everybody, you've been writing. But at some point you don't feel like you're so challenged. Like you just like, I'm a writer, I write for standards. I'm a writer, I've written a book. But are you thinking of moving, uh, are you thinking of moving your writing to another level. So if you are um, that person who've been writing and you've been so comfortable about writing, but you don't know what is next. Do I, do I have a future in writing? Do I want to pursue my writing to another level? So write your passion is that course that you'll need. So for six weeks, every Saturday, you'll be learning about one module. Every Saturday handles one module. After six weeks, you're going to graduate. Once you graduate, you'll start one year program with us, whereby you'll have your accountability partner. Somebody 
will, you will work together, you will hold each other's hand so that you move together in regards to writing. You'll also have some um, session, we call them early breakfast, where at 6.30 you'll meet with other people who have graduated and you'll um, learn from one person, either the person in your group or some new person coming in to share their experience in, it, in regards to writing. You'll also have writer's guild. At the end of the day, if you need help, I can't come to you, let's say Gabriel needs help with something. I'll not be, Gabriel needs my help. I won't be able to know what help Gabriel's need until Gabriel speaks out. So at the end of the day, we want you to speak out. Say, I've been writing this, but I'm finding it challenging. Can you go through it and uh, Patricia, did we lose you? Patricia? Anyone who can hear Patricia? I can't hear her from my end. I don't know if it is a challenge on my end or her end. Anthony? Um, you know, I can hear you, but uh, she's offline. Um, she's offline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Anyway, sorry about that. Um, anyway, what Patricia was uh, sharing was the the unique package that we have for writers at Write Your Passion. So, we give you six weeks of um, learning from other people, and then one year of support from Writers Guild. So, when you become part of the program, when you graduate. Uh, it is the start of the journey because we believe that writing cannot be taught entirely, but there is a bit of it that only support and being there for someone for a period of time helps. Yeah? So I saw um, Anne Burugu here. I don't know, Anne Burugu has taken part in the program. Anne, would you, would you love to share briefly, uh, possibly an experience or two, and maybe um, after you took part in the program, what, what you've been part of? What um, if you've written a book, or if that is in the in the in the offing, uh, you could just tell us briefly about that. And are you able? Uh, hi, yes. Gabriel. Hi, hi, Anne. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yes, um, I joined the Write Your Passion course in June last year. And so far, I've gotten tremendous support from the team. Uh, part of that also, I got to meet uh, around people in the writing world, such as uh, Lucas, who also offered a course in editing, which has been quite helpful. And uh, I can say the support has been good. If I would like to encourage anyone who would like to join, um, who would like to be a writer generally, and also a participate and maybe does not know where to start, where to begin. Write Your Passion is actually the best place to start. And uh, I'm happy to be part of the team. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. I will not let you go before you tell us what you're up to. Have you written <laughs> something? Uh, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm working on my first book. And also, I can say there's some mentorship that I've gotten or rather I'm also a mentor to other people who have assisted in terms of editing. And that has also improved um, the work that I'm doing currently. So I would say it's both a win-win situation. You, uh, you get assisted as you help others also. Yes, actually that is the spirit. And that is what we encourage always um, at Write Your Passion and at Writers Guild, not to come to Writers Guild or to come when we are needy, yeah? But not that being needy is bad, but we also come to offer something to other people who are writing uh, or the people who don't think that they, they can write as well. Thank you, Anne. And uh, we look forward to your book. 
when yeah. it's out, we'll be happy to share it and to read it and to buy it. Yes, of course. Thank you. And thank you for making time here. Anne is an accountant, eh? and um, it is not restricted that only those people who have studied literature can write. Anne is an accountant, and she's here, and she's writing her story. Yeah, David, David, I see David Nyajowi, who is a public health professional, also took part in the, in the program here. David, we'd wish to hear from you as well. Um, and most importantly, if you have written something after that, yeah, or what you what is in the offing? David, you're able to speak. David? All right. Sorry about that, Patricia. Uh, sorry we lost you, but I can see you're back. Uh, sorry about that. So, uh, so should you should you want to join the IT Your Passion class or should you want to know more about it? You can write to us at write at writersguild.co.ke. Yeah. Okay. Or you can fill a Google form. Uh, Gabriel, if you can share it for me. Now yes. that I'm using my phone, I'm not able to. Okay. Okay. I'll share it shortly. Um, meanwhile, there are some questions that have been asked. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Patricia, for that. I hope um, people will be inspired to, to give a push to their writing. I see many hands raised. So some questions that we can take, uh, maybe you can start from Nekoe uh, Ome. Nekoe? You are able to speak? I'm able to speak. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First and foremost, thank you so much for this um, remarkable um, initiative. So I am a spoken word artist and also um, a musician and um, an MA graduate of Arts and Culture Management. So I just wanted to touch on, briefly touch on something uh, professor said, and then also to pose a question. Okay. Um, so I was very intrigued when he spoke about um, writing is a way of retaining culture. And someone had spoken earlier and said um, that it's fundamental to write um, books and literature on activism. I'm an yes. activist, poet, spoken word. And I view activism like it has different layers. Um, writing about, for example, when Professor gave the example of um, Chinese culture, their food, writing about food is activism. Writing about love is activism. So per se, the social fabric, for me, um, everything is political, everything is activism. Because as Professor said, of the future generations will then look at what we wrote as ways in which we lived. So every avenue is an avenue of activism, whether it is um, to build the social fabric or to destroy it. So basically what I'm saying is um, going back to writing for writing's sake, that's how I perceive it. And in that way, it is an activism. Um, then my question was, I'm very interested in joining the, um, Write a passion program. Yeah. I'm currently about to complete writing my first book. And um, I'm wondering if it is possible to do it, because I saw on the site, I wish you could expand on it more about self-publishing through you. Is it possible for me to give my manuscript for that as I, as I attend the Write Your Passion program? Because I have particular goals on when I would like to complete the book and share it with the world. I've been writing it for three years now. So I would like the editing process to be um, simultaneous as I'm attending the classes. Asante Sana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much on that. Um, it is always our wish. Eh? Every other person who attends Write Your Passion 
on the first class, you set your goals. What would you wish to achieve from this? So some come, would, they would wish to publish a book. Others would wish to start their blogs. Others would wish to start writing, yeah? But the goal has to be clear from the beginning, Nekoe. So in your case, I think you have already finished the first class <laughs> of having a goal because some people always come and they don't know what they would wish to achieve. Yeah. So I would wish to, regarding the possibility of publishing you, you may, uh, I'm going to share this link in the, in the chat and you can see what Writers Guild offers regarding uh, publishing, self-publishing. So here are the details, yeah? Some of details in brief of our processes. So once you finish writing your manuscript, uh, we, take, we give it to a professional to do what we call evaluation. Is it ready? Are there some gaps that you can fill? Because as a writer, when you write, uh, there is um, there are a number of um, things that you could overlook, or maybe you are too emotional to, you know, to expand so much. So a professional looks at it objectively and then gives a, a complete report with either detail of it is ready for publishing or not. Or if it is not ready for publishing, then what can be improved? So a report on the status of the manuscript. Then all that goes, so we have all this process to a point that the, when the book is ready. Yeah. So all this is offered by Writers Guild. Uh, they are, the costs are captured here, uh, but this is a discussion that you'd wish to have and start. So some of the books that we have published um, in our six year journey, seven years journey now are here. Yeah. So you can just come to our website. You are able to see a boy named Salah. This is written by a lady called um, Sahara Abdi from Mandera. And his, her main concern was she has never read a book with characters from the North. So the mm. children from the North always feel left out. She wrote a book and the book is on um, in, in honor of someone who lost his life fighting for non-locals who had been attacked by the Al-Shabaab. So these are some of the books that our writers have written and are published by Writers Guild. You can just, um, you can just uh, come and read more about the book. Let's say if you take this for instance, this is um, uh, Ms. Omua Umbara is one of our great writers. Eh? So she's, she's a journalist and she witnessed what happened in post-election violence and uh, she captured it in her book. So you can just come and see the description of the book. So you can come and see some of the books that we have published or some of the writers who have passed through our hands and um, we would be happy to invite you to the same journey. Yeah. So when you come here, you will, you will see quite a varied uh, number of books um, written by young adults. Andrew Gashagwa is 16 years old. Yeah. Uh -huh. of different nature, yeah. So this is a journey we are inviting you to. So Nikoi, I would wish you to make the move, um, just sharing a link shortly in the, in the chat. You can fill the form or just write to us through write at writersguild.co.ke and we'll guide you further on that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nikoi. I look forward to seeing you in the May class. Our next uh, session will be in May. Uh, so we'll be very happy to have you. And right now we are only remaining with six chances because we always have, we can only have a maximum of 15 students. So right now we only have six chances to the May class. So make the move if you are interested. Okay. Okay, so I also saw another hand who just wish to give a chance. Um, Amos, Amos Onyango. Amos played a crucial role to help us get a prof. Amos is the coordinator of PLO Foundation. So Amos, this is your chance. And thank you very much for helping us tell this story. Amos? Okay, maybe if as we are look for, as we Hello. give Amos. Yes, Amos, here you are. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. You know, I, I, I raised my hand a little bit early. Okay. Uh, I was just uh, attending to another a call. So sorry, uh, I had to wait. Okay. Now, mine, mine is not a question, yeah. uh, but a concern. Yeah. Mine is not a question, but a, a concern. So okay. 
my concern is, eh, and yeah. my suggestion is to all the participants who are yeah. here. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to, to thank Gabriel Dinda and the entire Writers Guild team for putting down this amazing conference that is life-changing. Uh, one of the things that I want to acknowledge is that I'm also a beneficiary of Writers Guild. Maybe perhaps they didn't know that I benefited from this right from Kenyatta University. So Writers Guild is changing lives and through that I've authored uh, three books. The fourth one will be out next month. So wow. uh, Writers Guild is a place where I can assure each and every person who is uh, listening to this uh, webinar that they are going to succeed. So as Prof. Alia said, we just need to define what exactly we want among ourselves. And it doesn't have to be money. Most of the time, like for example, and Dinda can bear me a witness. We yeah. sometimes uh, want to raise like a million. We are looking for so much money so that we can publish or we are, we are writing um, uh, our manuscript and they're not being published by, by other publishers. I've yeah. witnessed so many things in uh, in Africa in regards to publishers. Most of them, some of them, I, I, I'll be very blunt to this because some of them are losing, are looking uh, for big people with big titles. So if yeah. you bank so much into these big uh, publishers, then you end up not having your book published. So it's, it's, it's upon you to take it from yourself and seek organizations like Writers Guild that are supporting young publishers. And you can agree on terms of engagement on how this can be self-published. So yeah. not unless we do that, then we'll keep on saying, I'll write, I'll do this, I'll do this. Years go by and you become old. And remember, history matters a lot. If you don't have an history that your grandchildren or the, the next generation to come will share, then it is nothing. So I, I don't want to take much of time, uh, Brother Gabriel, but I want to sincerely thank you and the entire team and also to thank all writers. I know uh, each and every person who join here, if you are not a writer, then you have a passion to write. I want to yeah. thank you for joining this webinar because I hope it was not useless for your time. It was worth it. And um, yeah. I believe you are going to be part of the Writers Guild and also bring other young people so that it doesn't have to be a Kenya thing. It doesn't have to be one region thing. Let us change Africa and let us even change the world because this is how great uh, things start. If you see the history of great uh, revolutions, they start with young people. So long as we can uh, make uh, living or we can make a change through telling our stories, then we can make great impact across Africa and even beyond. So start with the little resources you have, seek for consultation, seek for guidance and mentors. And I think we'll be able to achieve whatever we want. But if you are just seated there that you're waiting, that you will uh, try to look for contribution. Let me tell you, people nowadays are tired of contributing for people's money. So if you can't make your effort and use the little you have and grow slowly, then nobody will be there to listen for you. So I think that's all I can say as for now. But I want to say thank you, Gabriel and the entire team. Thank, thank you very much, Amos. And just before you go, Amos, eh? mm. thank you so much sincerely for helping us to uh, bring one of our mentors, Prof, uh, to this session. Before you go, Amos, I would wish that you tell the you tell the writers who are here briefly about your book. Just tell them the twist and turns. Eh? Just tell them briefly about it, because it is at the core of what we are doing here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. A twist and turn is about my real life story, and um, it uh, I wrote it to just inspire young people because most of the time, you know, people fear sharing their stories. But I want to challenge those who are here. If you don't tell your stories. Just imagine you are reading now, you are reading history books that were written by somebody. Who will be able to know that at this particular time this happened? Who, who will be able to get encouraged eh, 
because yeah. you know now nowadays you have a lot of uh, depression you have a lot of suicide there's so many young people outside there who are left orphans and i was left orphan at age 12 but i didn't sit there and wait to be helped i i worked out my ways so people want to get such stories so that at least they can get inspired and they can feel that they can still make it no matter their background, no matter their financial situation, no matter the challenges they are going through, they can still make it. So uh, Tristan Tanz is a memoir, like it's a real blunt story about myself. And I encourage each and every person to tell your story in a, in a, in, in, in a, in a way that you can, because each and every person here has a story to tell. I'm not saying that my story might be the best or, or Gabriel Zinda's story might be the best. Each of us learn from each other. Gabriel's story, my story, somebody's stories. If you all read these stories, you'll notice that there is a place where you have learned something. Maybe a two lines or one line, you have gained some resourceful information. So that's why I came up with the twists and turns, which is a story of survival of my life. And Gabriel knows about it actually, because it's purely blunt, no, nothing has been added is as raw as it is. So that is it. Thank, thank you very much, Amos. You know, Amos, Amos inspires me a lot because I, I know Amos more than probably all of you here. And um, when I asked him to share his story, it was a trap for him uh, because the book is very emotional. The book is so real. The, the trouble is we have all Amos in us. I have my story. Amos Ndung was his story. And Ajulu, you know, you have your story. But there is something that we always think that my story is not good enough. Or my story is not, um, you know, I'm not a politician or I'm not a, a government official. So I don't think my story is, is, um, is there yet. But then look at, uh, there is when we were launching the book, Amos book, and where PLO was the prof was the chief guest. He alluded to something that in the Bible, the, what is written in the Bible is not complex. It is just, you know, someone came from here and went here and went here and came back. So if you look at it in terms of my story is ordinary, then you would say then all the things that are written are very ordinary. But then that is the life we live. We live an ordinary life. So we need to tell ordinary stories. So this Gabriel, is a challenge to you. Gab Ken. Gabriel, just before I know I'm cutting you short, but I want to, to make them know this. Yeah. Eh? If, yeah. you, if you look at now the history of those people, the world uh, dominating economies or companies or organizations that are doing well, see what yeah. they have invested in, information. information. If you check at Facebook, they have invested in data, that is information. Yeah. If you check at Microsoft, they have invested in data, that is information. Yeah. If you check Google, they have invested in data, that is information. Yeah. So. Provided you don't invest in information, yeah. just imagine the world that the next generation, how they will suffer. So if we don't tell any story, it doesn't ask that it has to be in a hard copy. It doesn't mean that it has to be something that is, uh, is videoed, but you can write something and put it online. Somebody somewhere will get it. So that is how you can do this thing. And somebody will see, oh, this guy has a nice, or this lady has a nice uh, uh, story. We can support him with our little 10 bob, a little 20 bob and make it go to the, to, to the press. So it doesn't matter that my story is ordinary. That ordinary is what makes the extraordinary come out. Hey, that is very profound almost. What is ordinary is what makes extraordinary. Yeah. A very good point to, to push it back to the, the, the authors who are here, the 53 of us. Thank you very much, Amos. And please just Thank type you. here where we can yeah. get your book. And Thank uh, you. yeah. any, reviews, any online reviews where, we, where someone can get a bit of it. We want yes. to reach each other. Yeah. yeah thank, so, thank you. I'll type that. Thank you so much, Gabriel. But I also want to, to apologize for the public for, for the internet connectivity that we had. We had poor internet connectivity when Prof was talking. And that's why the video was not able to be there because it's far away from me. So I was not able to coordinate that easily. But all in all, I think the message was at home. Well done, Amos, well done. I tell you, we are grateful for the moments we had. Every moment spent with a legend, a minute with a legend is equals a lifetime. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Yeah. Bon, I would wish to hear from you. Say this is amazing. Would wish to hear from you. Eh? Are you are you going to take the challenge to you know to tell your story? I see you've raised your hand for quite some time, and I'm sorry, you are only able to speak now. Yvonne, you are able to speak. Just unmute. We just have 14 minutes to close shop. <laughs> oh, here I am. Hi, Gabriel. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes technology defeats us. Anyways, um, as Gabriel has said, my name is Yvonne. Um, we just happen to be on the same, what is this, the Creative Council um, oh. WhatsApp group. So I saw this meeting. Yes, that is where I saw this from. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I thought, let me let me come and and actually join. Yeah. Um. I, I'll I'll say I'm just a creative. Technically, I'm not a writer. Not that I can't write, but uh, I'm not really a writer. But, um, I want to say that this has been amazing. It has. I have learned quite a bit from everyone who has spoken. Um. I can see everybody has a passion for writing. Um, what I can see and what I feel is that, yes, we don't have the necessary know-how um, to be able to tell our story as Africans, which is very important because, yes, it has been destroyed. Um, yes, we need to figure out how to bring that out, especially in the education system, which is very, very crucial. Um, but this is a first step. This is how you start. You make one one step and then you move to the next one and the next one and the next one. So this is fantastic. Um, this is a great concept. So if we continue like this, and then um, I believe we'll make some way forward. Um, they also mentioned the, the thing of Safaricom and other organization helping, yeah. which is very cool. Um, you should also maybe consider the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. They would be the best, especially when it comes to distribution and curriculum because they can be able to assist people figure out what is it that needs to be done to the curriculum to improve the reading culture yeah. because i think that those are the best people to start with instead of trying to figure out going to bigger organizations so they would be useful to be able to help the reading culture in this country and see how they can assist and make sure that people do actually read because it's it starts with the schools so yeah so thank you for this and uh, it was a pleasure to meet everyone enjoy your evening Thank, thank you very much, Yvonne. Happy to see you all the way from the Creative Council. I'm very happy that you are here and uh, you tell our stories in different ways. Thank you for the idea of approaching KICD. We work actually closely, yeah? Though it is something that we probably need to intensify so that we are able to do more together. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for what you've shared. Yeah. Okay, and anyone else would wish to speak? I uh, would not wish to lock anyone out. This is the this is the baraza that Prof started for us. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sofina. Sofina, allow me to give chance to Mogale, Peter. Then I'll come to you. Okay. So Mogale, Peter, you may start. Then Sofina will will come next. Yes, Mogale, you are able to unmute and speak. Sorry, Sofina, please go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think Mogali will, will, will his internet may, may not be functioning well. Sofina? Yes, Gabriel. Yes, Good you're welcome. Asante. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a great privilege to be here in this session and thank you so much once again for organizing this. But also I wanted to bring something small to our attention. Even as we speak about telling the African stories, I believe some of us, you know, just being in our spaces of influence and I'd like to speak in my capacity as a youth mentor and an enthusiast for the education sector in this country. I think we tend to realize that we have platforms where we can tell our stories as we know them to people in the younger generation. So I'd like to encourage, even as we seek to take our stories 
to the world, let's also share the stories that we have with us, with those who are coming behind us in terms of, you know, students in secondary and in primary and the young people that we get to engage with on a day to day basis. So I think for me, that has been the challenge to just see how we can get more people to know the, the African story and what we stand for. Thank you. What, what idea do you have, Sofina? How can we go about that? I mean, um, you know, at least for me in my space, it's literally the, the interactions and the engagements of every day, reaching out to young people, talking to them about leadership. So now what, what we're talking about is, yes, it's leadership, but can we when we are creating the context of speaking to these young people, what, how are we channeling that message? So even for me now, that's the challenge <laughs> that I'll be seeking to explore as a okay. trainer and youth mentor. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, it's a, it's a good place to start. It's a good place to start, Safina, to have a challenge. At least it gives us a picture of where we, what we can do, yeah? So to have the challenge is good enough. But then, Safina, how about if we start small? You see, our friend mm -hmm. uh, Kevin. I saw Kevin here. So Kevin has written yes. a book, Workplace. Yeah. So you yes. know, Workplace Chronicles. As simple as that. I've not read the book, and um, mm -hmm. I've not read the book. And I told, um, I'm in the process of getting my copy. But look at that. Yes. So many things happen in our lives. Huh? You know that story that has been written today by Kevin. I mean, I'm... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Sofina, go ahead. <laughs> No, 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 please go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Yes. No, I'm just saying this as simple as the story may sound, those are the stories then that we need to pass on tomorrow because the workplace may change. Now people working from home and we will need mm -hmm. stories of how it was when we were working from offices. Yeah. Sofina? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I agree with that. Yes. So we have to send it out. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. And this is the call of everyone. Asante. Ah, okay. Asante Sana Sofina. Um, anyone else would wish to speak? Just one more, then we can close the session and um and, you know. And then act on our commitments. I would wish to ask Gilbert Were to speak just briefly, because Gilbert is in a very interesting space where he's trying to come up with um, a bookshop that is focused on stocking and making available African stories. Yeah. So Gilbert runs this Africa Book Hub. Yeah where our stories are shared out there. If you publish a book, you take to them and they are able to share it with the world. Yeah. So Gilbert, what's your view on this? Where can we start? Or um, do you also make a commitment to write and to help writers grow? Yes, Gilbert, you are able to speak. Gilbert? <laughs> okay, I see Gilbert is not able to speak at the moment. Yeah, okay. So, does Gilbert have a virtual bookstore? Now, that, that is what I would wish Gilbert to answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, David, David, you may go, you may, you may speak. Yeah, sure. Uh, Gabriel, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I just wanted to speak because you initially alerted me to say a word yes. or two. Yes, yes. Uh, about the experience of uh, having attended the program, Like Your Passion. Yeah. Uh, I can say that uh, this is one very great uh, program. Uh, and anyone else who is here and is really intending to start up something in the writing space, this is the right place to go. Uh, in my experience, I've come to really meet with very prolific people, people who really have a very vast experience. Uh, they really know how to tow you in the line. Uh, 
and be able to direct your energies as to where you're really supposed to, you know, yeah. what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to see your outcomes come through. Um, I really liked it. I'm really enjoying uh, even post the training period. Uh, right now, I'm engaged in two writing competitions. I submitted to one of the health conferences, uh, which just ended yesterday, and I earned a certificate out of that. Uh, we are still growing in this. I'm not very uh, mature as my brother Amos and the rest, uh, Gabriel here, Patricia. But uh, it's a growing, uh, it's a work in progress, and I'm hoping to grow at some point, be able even to produce, a, you know, a book. Uh, yeah, but uh, the way I now see writing in my perspective has really changed, has really, really changed. It's, yeah. it's now isn't, I can I have sources that I can reach out to at whatever moment to be able to, you know, just connect and uh, seek guidance whenever I need. And th that's really great. And just to know that however you may, however much you may think it's hard on your end or it's a, a little bit, you know, uh, difficult to start up, uh, there are people who are very much ready to help you out here. Uh, yeah, so really, really much. Thank you so much, Gabriel and the team. That was a wonderful, wonderful training. I know my colleagues in cohort five are really, really happy. Uh, we are planning something. We'll we'll talk later after the <laughs> Thank you very much, David. I would really, I'm very keen if you can even just mention what yeah. you learned from Oyunga Pala, the twinness. I can actually start narrating a whole eight points here, and I don't think we have been this, but. Oh, Yunga Pala is one of the very, very amazing uh, tutors in this in the, in the program. Uh, I think it's one of the classes I really enjoyed because <laughs> it is brought to you in the natural context. Yeah, you look at writing as I am home and this is what this space I have and this is all I can see, then yeah. that is all you have to write. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it starts from the fridge, he has a story around the fridge, look at it every day. It brings you to your mother, the way your mom normally cooks. Yeah, and then he tells you now, because those are the kind of stories, because that's actually what we relate with. Mm. But people think that uh, because you're from Kenya, and maybe you read a, a, an article, uh, maybe from the US, from the Bill Gates, from the, you know, the, the Microsoft guys, you tend to think you really have to be complicated and write things that are, you know, be in your space. As Amos said, it's ordinary that is, is being ordinary is what makes you extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. Because no, in that time, nobody has ever heard such stories. So you put it down, it, it, it will actually relate with people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. But Yunga Vala, that guy is so, so amazing. So amazing. So amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> David, eh? yeah, uh, very well, you know, yeah, things after that. Now, even the people who had not come up with ideas to start writing, people who thought, let's say, I need to travel somewhere very far to start writing, not knowing that, yeah. you know, where you are is where it starts. Yeah, your story, ordinary, yeah. like I almost said, eh? exactly. yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you very yeah. much, David. And I uh, look forward, David, you are in the public health sector eh? and we need yeah, we need yeah. stories from there we need stories yeah so yeah thank you david eh? thank you for starting off thank you so much ali, Watch out ali, this <laughs> ali ali be the last one to speak ali hassan <laughs> be the last one then we close the session thank you so much everyone for taking part in this ali Ali, are you there? Hello. Yes, Ali. <laughs> I am Zikri Ali Mali Ibrahim. Okay. From Somalia. And I am so happy to be a member of this Writers Gala Kenya. And I was seeking for this work for so a lot of time. So my beloved brother, you may grant me a brief information about this and how to be an expert in writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Th thank you very much, Ali. Yeah? Our friend from Somalia. Yeah? <laughs> this is, it's a very nice thing to have, um, uh, you know, someone join us all the way from Somalia with a desire to write. This is, this is very good. This is very good, Ali. Ali, the journey of writing is, um, is something that uh, possibly I cannot tell you, you know, how to be a perfect writer mm -hmm. in five min the five minutes that we have or the 10 minutes that we have, or even the six weeks that we offer in the program. It is, it is a journey that, you know, it, it's like growing of a child. You can't... I've understood you nicely. It's like, it's in a journey, though, though, when, though we are in a journey. I know yes. that it's not be sufficient to me an expert in writing. Right yeah. now, I am an expert in writing. I know how to write for something. But I would like to gain a lot of experience in writing Gal Kenya. So yeah. this, when I have seen the BLO program, when I have seen for that, and that you have allowed me to be one is invited in this place, I feel rejoiced out for that. But I would like to be yeah. a member of and one of the close friends of yours, and to be one of the winners. And even be a member of for those who have just taken our certificate is one of the programs of BLO. Okay. I know that I am in Somalia right now, but as I would like to come in Kenya. Before I come there, I would like to get or to gain a lot of information about this and be the one who have just facilitated me for this aspect. Hmm. Thank, thank you very much, Ali. Thank you very much. May I request you, Ali, because this is a journey. Yes. We, have, we have just said that this is a journey. May I request yes. you if you can either write an email to us. I've just written. Please write to us through write at writersguild.co.ke. Then we will call you. And then um, you know, we guide you step by step or let you know of the available avenues through which we can guide you to grow in your writing desire. Thank you very much. And I'm very glad to you how brotherly and confidently you have just appreciated me. Will I write my Gmail to you right now in the message button or will I write you as a special? Okay. Um, uh, okay. I've, I've written the email on the chat. Have you seen it? The email where you can write the, the, the email, where you, our email. Right now, I have seen, I have uh, right at writer, at writer's girl, the call, the key. Yes. That the yes. Email, that you have just write me. Yes, yes. So you can just write us an email there, and then we will um, we will get back to you. My beloved brother, before you have left me, how yeah. about the way that I'm talking to you, the way that I'm talking to you, where yeah. you have access? Do, do we have a? How? Right now, I have fit in the Gmail that you have just sent me. I yeah. said to you, my beloved brother, can you please mention me the way that I'm talking to you when you have made an evaluation to me? Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, <laughs> thank you a lot. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I've also shared our, our phone number just in case you would want to reach us through WhatsApp. Yeah? So um, we are going to, to work with you and to travel the journey with you and guide you throughout your writing. And that is My beloved brother, yeah. you have just mentioned me, right? This girl, Kenya, is the program that the Professor Patrick Otunio Lumamba, where, it, where he is the head of oh, the young. Where is them? Is but for is but you continue to remember the chancel of this program. Okay, I, I think it could be a network challenge, but I can't hear you very well. That's why I was saying if we can, maybe we, we'll call you and then we'll talk about this more. Thank you, thank you, Allah. Thank you, thank you. All right, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alan. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. All right, thank you very much. 
thank, thank you very much, everyone who made time to attend this. Uh, thank you for your time. We've been here since two. Uh, we hope we have uh, uh, sown a seed to join you. Um, we are open to discuss and to grow together. So we ask you to reach out to us. Uh, so at this point, we will have another public lecture. Sorry, I've just seen a hand. <laughs> Uh, I would not wish to leave someone out. Um, okay. Is it okay, Maureen? Is it thank Maureen you. or Penina? Penina? Yes. Yes. Did you raise your hand? Do you, do you wish to say, had, to say something? I had raised earlier. <laughs> Are you able to get me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Panina. Uh, I want to appreciate you for the for the good work and the raising the forum. Yeah. At the same time, maybe I'll suggest something yeah. amongst uh, amongst ourselves. Maybe we can have a potential partners whom we can maybe yeah. share with each other. Like, hold my hand, ask me how I'm doing with how I'm doing with my my book or something. So that so we're on the yeah. same page because we don't without these partners sometimes sometimes we tend to lose track. Otherwise, um, I really appreciate the, the forum. It's been very helpful for me and I commit to write. Thank you. Thank you very much, Penina. It is what what you've just said is what we call growth partner. Growth sure. partner. So when you become a member of Writers Guild or when you take part in this session. In, uh, okay. in Write Your Passion program, you are given a growth partner. So not really given, but you, know, you select someone who you'd wish to work with. Then okay. we guide you, we give you some, some, some guidelines, what you can do, um, okay. how, how often you can meet. Yeah? So the growth okay. partner helps a lot to keep you, um, you know, to, to help you write more. So possibly what you can do is we can, uh, we can discuss. Um, mm -hmm. I have your contact. Patricia can reach out and discuss mm -hmm. regarding your membership. Then we can start with mm -hmm. the growth partner. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll have another, another uh, lecture in two weeks' time. And we'll let you know the details in due course. We'll reach out to you. Thank you so much for the time that we've had. We are very happy to have shared with you. So at this point, you are free. Uh, we'll just play two or three videos of previous classes of Write Your Passion. So, uh, but you are free to leave at this point. Uh, thank you so much. And um, we hope to grow together. <laughs> thank you so much. One of the if you click one of the links, they'll bring you here, and you'll be able to see uh, you know, all the details about Writers Guild, uh, our journey, some of the services we offer, our programs, all that.
I'm also a writer. I graduated from Brighton. was not uh, Tom Oriambo. He took us, so he facilitated the editing bit of the program, whereby he took us through uh, editing the various types of categories. Uh, we also are honored to have Omo Mbara, the author of this beautiful book. She managed to take us through the process, saying that uh, in order to publish, you need to you need to write consistently, you need to keep your writing, no matter how difficult the project is, you need to keep writing. And so far, I am in the process of uh, publishing my anthology with the help of other friends and other writers. And uh, through the help of Writers Guild, I'm sure the book will be coming out soon. My book is talking about the color of skin that you look at every day. And it's telling you you're enough. It's a and time you're perfect and you're powerful. Now I'll start by introducing myself. Um, I've been writing a lot of notes for this. My name is Aida Kemunto. I'm a graduate student at USIU, taking my master's in information systems and technology. I'd like to think of myself as a writer by profession. My first story, I wrote my first story, which was a poem on my mom's typewriter at work. She used to be a secretary. So I'd visit her and just type things on the typewriter. That was my first story, which was a poem. I've been writing since then. I, I usually write um, fictional stories mostly romance and science fiction, anything that can be created and conjured up is something that I write. 
So I've been writing more romance the past few years. My first story was a uh, science fiction, which was called Camp Massa. I wrote it for my classmates. I used to write in exercise books and then book and read through the like form one to form four, I think. Yeah. The second story that I published was called Him, which was the first story based in Nairobi that I wrote. And then since my father came along. Since my father is a story about a young woman who's struggling to survive in a world where her dad is trying to control her life. She's the daughter of the attorney general. She's engaged to one of the richest businessmen in the world, but she wants something different in her life. She's been passionate about music growing up, but that's the last thing her father wants her to be. He, he always thought her to be the first female president in a country that is